Hey guys, welcome to Small Mouth Crush. So I got a lot going on this week, but my buddy Eric called and said, hey, let's hit up the Chesapeake Bay tomorrow. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to get some rods and reels ready to go, get some bait. I also stopped at the local tackle store today and made a few purchases. So we'll go through uh, a little bag of goodies that I found. All right, so every once in a while I like to stop down at the local uh, tackle store. It's mostly geared towards saltwater fishing, a lot of striper fishing, but he does have some bass gear in there. And a lot of a lot of times I've been able to dig through some of the stuff and find some real old baits that you just can't find anymore, stuff that they don't make. I mean, these packages were just prehistoric uh, looking. And it's always interesting. You never know what you're going to find. I talked to him today, the owner. And he's actually going to be, uh, he's in the process of selling the store. And if it falls through, he's actually just going to be closing it down at the end of the year. And he says, I got so much stuff up in the attic of boxes over the years, old Bagley's, um, just a lot of old types of baits that they don't make anymore, first generation stuff. And I'm like, why do I got to wait a year? He's like, Oh, he made some excuse about getting his knee replaced and he doesn't want to climb up the the stairs. I, I don't know. I'm going to put some pressure on the dude in the next couple of months here and see if I can get my hands on some of that tackle. That would actually make a killer video. Uh, but no, I stopped in there today. And you know what? I just made that video, actually just finished editing up the video on uh, lipless crankbaits. And lo and behold, we got a little bag here. Let's see what we got in here. That's right, I found some Excaliburs. So, we got some square bills. I mean, $6.99. That's, that's pretty crazy. I got, I bought every square bill that Excalibur makes. Got a bunch of that. More square bills. I got some plans for those square bills, perhaps on the Potomac. So I want to sh share with you guys kind of some things I have coming up uh, down the road. So next week is start of the uh, BFL on the Potomac. So it's the first one of the season. That starts on Saturday. I'm going to go down a few days earlier and take a look around, see what those fish are doing. It should be a slug fest. I got some big plans for some of the baits I bought. I'm looking forward to it. Matt, the guy who was was hanging along with me at the Classic, he's going to be down there. We're going to be rooming together. I'm sure we'll make some pretty good uh, some pretty good videos while we're down there. Um, and really, tomorrow, I'm just looking forward to getting out with Eric and, and checking the conditions of the bay. Uh, I also found two of the uh, XR50s. So, I mean, not not a color I would throw a lot, but hey, let's. I'm not going to complain. I found that bad boy. That's a pretty cool color. I haven't thrown the square bills, the Excalibur square bills. I don't know. I've heard a lot of good things about them. I know they don't make them anymore, so I got some. And then just for fun, I know a good buddy of mine loves to throw Bagley's, and these aren't the first generation, second generation. These are brand, these are newer. Um, but I went with a, a couple square bills um, in the right color. So I might tie that on. I'm going to doctor it up a little bit today and tie that on for tomorrow. I'm not sure what we're going to find. And I made the run to Walmart. Got another storage container. Got me some super glue so I can get those Kitex on the bait, on the swim, uh, swim jig and chatter baits. I bought a bunch of paint, so some black paint, red. I got white in here so I can doctor up some of the baits little brushes to uh, paint up the crankbaits. Then I got a bunch of scissors here. Here's the deal. A buddy of mine, Lucas McDaniel, you might know him. He, uh, he runs Apollo Shield. And he gave me this tip last year when we were on Oneida. You know, I was sitting in his boat, we are out fishing, and I, I looked down at these scissors, and uh, I, you know, I grabbed them, cut my braid with it, and I was like, what the heck, man? These things are legit. He's like, yeah, uh, they're Walmart scissors. I'm like, say what? He 
He's like, yeah, they're $1.99. I think I got these for a, a buck a piece. He's like, they're the best thing. So he's like, when, when you, uh, you know, when you trash them, just throw them out, get some more. They cut braid really good. They cut line good for $2. I think it's, a, they're actually in the sewing section. So uh, the fabric part of Walmart carries these very cheap scissors that cut braid really, really good. Oh, just a quick tip for you guys if you want to save some money on scissors because I go through a bunch of them. I, only, I lose them. I don't know where they end up. But it's always good to have a bunch laying around. Well, let's start rigging up some rods. All right, I'm going to probably throw a square bill around. I'm going to use this bag lease here. Nice, nice little bait. I'm familiar with this color. Um, hooks are, hooks are okay. I just, I'm not a big fan of, uh, just a round bend treble. I like to throw the triple grip. There we go. Replace that with the triple grips there. Throw that on my square bill rod. Nice. Yeah, I'm gonna doctor that up. I'm gonna try my I'm gonna try my little paint that I just bought. I'm gonna put a little bit of flare there on the gills. It's got a little dull red. I'm gonna brighten that up. You know. Alright, so I got some bright red. I'm just going to use a little Q-tip here, and that way I don't have to waste a brush on just a little bit of painting here that I'm going to do. Well, this side turned out a little bit better than the other side, so hopefully the fish is looking at it on the other side. I don't know if he's going to bite this side. Not bad. I even put a little down here. Not that it matters. I really want to get on a chatterbait bite this weekend. Oh, so let's figure out how we're going to do that. I got this uh, Picasso shock blade. It's, it was the hair, the hair chatterbait. I threw it a little bit earlier this year when the water wasn't right. It looks pretty good going through the water, but I have to go with the new jackhammer chatterbait. I need to figure out if that's the deal or not. So I'm gonna be running that tomorrow for sure. Look at that sexy thing. Wow. All right, the jackhammer's coming out. They get a pretty penny for these baits. Can't even get the hook guard off of it. What the heck? How's that work? There we go. Got half of it. All right. Um, so the water temps are still going to be fairly cool. I mean, they're warming. We're, we're starting to get some really good weather here. Leaves are starting to bud. Flowers are out. I don't want anything crazy on the back. I want something more subtle, so I'm going to go with a three-inch uh, swimming Cinco as a trailer on that chatterbait. I got some ideas. All depends on the water clarity, what we run into. Probably going to want to flip a jig. Crankbait and jigs and chatterbait, and we'll have a worm. Little drop shot action, Texas rig action. I really want to put this rod to the test. This is that Dobbins uh, chatterbait rod. Uh, what is it exactly? It's the DX736 glass, and it looks amazing. I need to get this thing dialed in. 
before the Potomac event. Because I'm going to tell you, the Potomac event is going to be a reaction. I got. You're going to see in the video how I approach that. I'm actually going to film a couple days in practice. Uh, that's when it's go time, man. I mean, I'm ready to do some damage. Last year on the Potomac, the first BFL was right around the same time. The fish were mostly uh, in a spawn, some pre-spawn, post-spawn. I mean, they were kind of, it was like right there at that exact time when everything's going on. And my buddy Matt actually won the tournament. I was next to him about 50 yards all day. I had a little deal going, drop shotting. And if I can find some of that footage from last year, I'll, I'll share it with you. I ended up losing four giants that day. Uh, two were on a drop shot. One was just a weird deal. The other one was a super long cast and it jumped. And then the other two big fish I lost were on like a split shot rig. And I guess, you know, it's not the co-angler's fault. It, it really isn't, but he could have taken a, a shot at that fish. In fact, I was basically had it right up and I was just in my head. It happened so quick. In my head, I'm thinking, net it. What, what are you waiting for? And uh, unfortunately, that fish got off. I get pretty loud and aggressive sometimes. Apparently, people heard me from quite a ways away when I lost that fish. But it did make for a pretty cool video. I'm going to see if I can dig that one up. I just don't want that to happen. I mean, I, I had I only came in with four fish that day. I had one monster, one six-pounder. I caught that on a flick shake, long cast, towards the end of the day. You know, Matt's over there just crushing them, throwing a chatter bait and a few other different baits. And I didn't, I was too stubborn. I picked up the chatter bait for a little while. But I it was my first time fishing the Potomac in the spring, and I wasn't, I just didn't feel it. I should have felt it because that was the deal to keep throwing that reaction bait. However, I wanted to keep going back to the drop shot. We had like a flood tide, and that wasn't the conditions I was looking for. Uh, like I had in practice. So I'm going to be going, I'm going to definitely be doing a little drop shotting and some chatter baiting, I would imagine. So I'm actually going to give these uh, Kitech, these Kitech football, finesse football heads a try. I know a buddy that's been doing pretty well on them. So I'm going to take a green pumpkin. It's got a black head. I'm going to put a black 2.8 Kitech on it for a trailer. And so my plan here is to just, basically I'm going to cast it out, let it hit the bottom, and just a slow retrieve. Uh, just let it keep going, let it swim along, along the bottom. A little bit different than, you know, dragging a football. Uh, I'm going to keep this moving. So a lot of guys have been having some really good luck catching some pretty good fish doing it that way. All right, so i got to put some line on the jerkbait rod. Not that I don't even think I'm going to use it, but I'm going to bring it just in case, in case I feel the urge. 10-pound uh, mono suffix. That's what I'm going to throw on the jerkbait rod. It's a good line. If you watch the jerkbait video, I explain why I use mono. I feel it gives the, uh, gives the, it makes the bait more natural. It doesn't, doesn't give extra drag or sink the bait. Keeps it positioned, if, especially if you doctored them up and made them suspend perfect. I just think going with mono is the best at least in my opinion. Again, a lot of people have different opinions on what type of line to throw on their jerk baits. I just, I just like mono. I'm weird like that. Someday. I don't know why I got that Sugar Ray song in my head. You guys know who Sugar Ray is? Sugar Ray. Every morning, I was thinking of the other one. Uh, well, I just had it. It was in my head all day. Now I can't even think of it. You know, I saw him in concert, UW Oshkosh, back in the day. Sugar Ray. Things you think of when you're spooling line. All right, what jerk bait do you want to tie on in case you get the urge? I'm not going to get the urge. Throw a jerk bait on the Chesapeake. Let's go with the Pointer 78 Tennessee Shad. No, no. Table Rock Shad. Okay. 
Maybe I'll use a living stint. Now. Every morning I throw a jerk bait for a weekend. It is time to take the silver buddy off, I believe. I believe I'll bring him, but he's not the main deal. I do need to change this line. I will use this rod for a wacky rigged Cinco. Oops. Okay, I'm going with 12 on the wacky rigged Cinco, an old spool of Yozeri hybrid. That's probably best to be thrown away, but I'm cheap. And I got a little trick to maybe bring that line back to life. We're going to grab our buddy KVD line and lure, put a little bit on a cloth. It's just a line conditioner. They claim it helps with uh, casting distance and making things smooth. I don't know. It seems to work. Spray a little on the line. And then as I spool the rest of the line, I'm just going to hold that line in, in between the cloth that has the conditioner on it and slowly fill it up. All right, it is drop shot time, owner mosquito number two. And then we're going to try that new deal from Kitech. Actually, I caught a handful of smallmouth on it the other day. And I was pretty impressed with the worm. I'll show you that in a second. Boom. Okay, we're going with the Kitech Morning Dawn color, which is a terrible color to throw on tidal water. I don't even know why I'm doing it. Do not throw morning dawn. I have these Excalibur somewhere in a safe, maybe. I'll take them out 40 years from now. Oh, what happens if we catch like four fish tomorrow? I'm gonna freak out. That'd be a good day. Okay. The lineup is ready. Let's walk you through the lineup, guys. We can do this. Okay, so we start on this end here. Actually, let's start on this end. We got the football finesse, Kitech jig with the 2.8. We got the dirty swim jig here with the hypertail grub. Can't go wrong with that. Ooh, the jack hammer. Jack hammer swimming Cinco. Got a War Eagle, Indiana Bladed, Spinner Bait. Doubt I'll throw it, but it's there. And of course, we got our Table Rock Jerk Bait. We got our new lovely painted up Bomber. Not Bomber, what is that? We got our newly painted up Bagley. We got a little finesse flipping jig. I'll put some pork on there. We got the Lucky Craft Mini, we got a DT-10 in the house, always, DT-6, ready to go. What is that? That's that, uh, that's that Mega Bass deal, that square bill that looks cool in the package. Uh, Wacky Rig Cinco, we got a little uh, Ned, Ned the Dead there, and Drop Shot. And that's how we're going to roll tomorrow. So stay tuned to more footage coming up. I'm going to have a full show on the water tomorrow. In the meantime, hope you enjoyed this quick video, which maybe dragged down a little longer than I expected. We'll find out. Hey, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. We'll see you guys on the water.